Amen. The next voice we'll hear from is a young man named Vigo Mortensen, who is an artist and an American citizen. Thank you very much. What's happening? Sorry, I didn't mean to offend anybody, but I thrown out a few t-shirts. All right then. Uh, it's an honor to be able to say a few words here and to join the growing popular opposition to the reprehensible actions and bankrupt policies of the Bush administration. It's going to take time to fix the mess this administration has made, and it's going to take more than one duly elected and truly compassionate administration to stop the erosion of our individual liberties and restore this country's moral standing in the world. Just as it takes more than a flag pin on your lapel to be a patriot, it takes more than just wearing a t-shirt like the one I've got on and the ones I threw out there to change things for the better. Please continue to speak and vote your conscience. I'm going to read a poem that I wrote in February of this year just before the Anglo-American invasion of Iraq. This is for the people of Afghanistan and Iraq, but most importantly for my fellow citizens in this country. It's called Back to Babylon. Accept and forget difference or desire that separates and leaves us longing or repelled. Why briefly return to play in broken places, to mock the ground, to collect infant shards, coins, fossils, or the familiar empty canisters and casings that glint from poisoned roots in the blackened dust? We make bad ghosts and are last to know or believe we too will fade just as our acrid smoke and those strange flakes of skin and strands of hair will into largely undocumented extinction. Lie down, lie down. Sleep is the best thing for being awake. Do as we've always been told and done. No backward glances or second thoughts leaving sad markers buried in the sand. Sleep now, dream of children with their heads still on, of grandmothers unburdening clotheslines at twilight, of full kettles slow ticking over twig embers. Ignore boneless, nameless victims that venture out onto bitter gravel to claim remains while we rest. Pay at the window for reheated, prejudiced incantations. Take them home and enjoy with widescreen, half-digested, replayed previews of solemn national celebration. Then sleep by all means. We'll need all the energy we can muster for compiling this generation's abridged anthology of official war stories, highlights of heedless slaughter to burnish our long and proud imperial tradition. At some point, by virtue of accidentally seeing and listening, we may find ourselves participating in our own rendering. Few of our prey will be left alive enough to water the sun with their modest time-rubbed repetitions to rephrase their particular unifying laws. Our version of events has already made its money back in foreign distribution and pre-sales. All victory deadlines must be met. It can get so quiet with or without the dead watching our constant deployments. From our tilted promontory, we may see one last woman scuffle away across cracked parchment of dry wash beneath us, muttering to herself, or is she singing at us? as she rounds the sheer granite face and disappears into a grove of spindly, trembling tamarisk shadows lining the main road. We'll soon hear little other than our own breathing as shale cools and bats rise to feed, taking over from sated swallows. Night anywhere is home. 
Darkness, a cue for turning inward. Quiet, an invitation to review our expensive successes before morning extraction from the twin rivers of our common cradle. And just a word to the people behind here. God is not angry. You are. Thank you. Amen.